All right. This video, it's going to be a bit of a longer one. What I want to try and do is uh, answer a question that many teachers have asked. Now that I have a tablet, how can I post my notes online in an easy manner with a minimal amount of effort so that students can access them and do it all for free? So here's my solution. The first thing that you need to do is you need to create yourself a website. Now, if you already have a website, you're ahead of the game, or if your school has one where you can access and post links, you're ahead of the game. If you have a blog, that's fine, too. If you're creating one from scratch, there's all sorts of good internet websites. You can use Google Sites, all sorts of stuff. The one I'm using right now is, is one called Yola, Y-O-L-A. Um, this is a free website educational tool. I got it from an educational site. Uh, I like it because it doesn't have any ads. But when you get here, you'll have to create an account in this area right here. I've already created an account. In fact, you can see here's my account. Uh, by the way, as a browser, I'm using Google Chrome. If you're using BC ESIS, I find Google Chrome as a browser works very well for it. Google Chrome is a very stripped down browser. It has a very fast Java engine. I'm doing all my BC ESIS stuff on Google Chrome, and it handles it quicker, I find, than Firefox. Little tidbit. So here's my website. It looks like this. And what I've done so far is I've created two links. I have one link that I've created here where I have the students giving me their email address and other student information using a Google form. I'll address that in another tutorial. But it's this second link here that says click here to access lessons, notes, answer keys, reviews, etc. This is the second link that I created. And all I did is I typed this phrase, I highlighted it, and then uh, where is the edit page? Uh, oh, here it is down here in this one. Uh, I, added, I added a link. You can figure out how to do that part yourself. But step one, create a web page. Right now you don't have a link to put in it yet. Step two is you need to create a SkyDrive account. So if you go to Google, Windows SkyDrive is a free 25 gigabyte virtual hard drive that Windows will provide you. So if you Google the word SkyDrive, you'll come to a Windows Live page. You'll need to create an account here as well. You'll need to give them your email address and whatnot. I've already done that. So when I click, mine's probably going to log in automatically because I've been on here. And the way the folder looks that you get, the virtual hard drive that you get from Windows, is you have a locked folder for favorites, a locked folder for videos, a locked folder for documents, a locked folder for photos. I don't use those. The key is you have an open folder for public. So I clicked on this folder, and then I clicked on create folder, and I created block B, block C, block D, E, F, G, and H. Block A is my prep. And then, for example, block B, which is physics 12, I clicked in here. I created a new folder called unit 1 kinematics, and I clicked on add files. I added my physics 12 formula sheet. If I want to go back to public, I got the breadcrumbs right there. I click on public, and I can go back. So create a folder for each one of your blocks or each one of your courses, whichever way you want to do it. I find it easier to do it for each block. Then go back to Windows SkyDrive. Uh, click on public again, and we want to choose send a link. And this is going to send the public link, the long HTML code, to an email address. And this is where you type your own email address. I've already done that. I sent it to myself, and the email, ad the email link that I got is this long thing. I use Gmail for my email, whatever email program you use. You're going to get something that says such and such, your username, whatever username you created. I created PMSS Math Teacher. Is sharing the folder public with you. Here is the link. Ah, but here's the key. It says, having trouble viewing this email? Try pasting this web address into your browser. If you right-click on it and copy link address, then you go back to whatever web page that you set up. Mine was Yola, and that's the link that you're going to activate under this click here to access lessons, notes, 
answer keys, reviews, etc. This long link is what you're going to give to your students, but they're not going to be able to remember that. That's why I recommend pasting it into a web page somehow. If you're not sure how to do that, ask one of the teachers at your school who's web page techie, and they'll be able to show you how to do the creation of the link on a web page. Or if you see me in person, I'd be happy to show you. It's easier to show you in person. All right. So when I do that, I now have a web page that looks like this. My web address I paid for, pitmath.com. It takes me to a site that looks like this. This is the link that I pasted where kids can give me their personal information. I can get their email addresses. But click here to access lesson notes, answer keys, reviews, etc. That's that long SkyDrive link that I entered. If we, my kids click on it, it takes them to my public Windows SkyDrive. Now, there are ads over here, but I think they're all rated G, and I can't control those ads. That's Microsoft. I'm stuck with that. Now, if I have a Block G, or well, I haven't had Block G yet. If I have a Block D student, then they would click on Block D. Oh, Unit 1 Skills for Math. And there's the Lesson 1, and you can see it's a PDF file. They can choose whether they want to view it as icons, uh, details maybe. And I usually teach them to sort by date. And that way, it's in the exact date that you've taught. That's Part 1, creating a repository for your files and creating an easy method for the students to access those files. You've got to get them that link somehow, whichever way you think that works best. Step two, I create on my desktop a folder called Notes for Students. I do that by just right-clicking New Folder. The reason I create it on my desktop is when I'm in tablet mode, I don't have access to my keyboard. I want to do it with a minimum of clicking. And whenever I want to save anything, desktop is always an option on the left-hand side there somewhere. So I create it on my desktop. And in this, I've got block B. I created a folder, block C, D, E, F, G, and H. One for each of my classes. Again, block A is my prep, so I don't have one there. In each of these, I have a subfolder called Already Uploaded. Once I've uploaded a file, I drag it into there so I don't upload it twice. Let me show you how today would have worked then. Today, for Physics 12, I pre-typed my Lesson 1. I did it in Word. And uh, Lesson 1 looked like this, I think. This was my lesson one. I photocopied this for my kids as a blank document. And then I would have gone print, send to OneNote using that OneNote 64-bit fix. I'll have to wait for a couple of seconds while it inserts itself into OneNote. And I'm doing this live so you can see how long this does take. It's really only about 10 seconds. You can do this in the class on the fly if you forget to do this ahead of time. It's not that big a delay. I would have typed here lesson one. I've already created new notebooks, one for each class. Block B is my physics 12. I would have right clicked, cut, clicked on block B, physics 12 right clicked and paste it. Now I've already done lesson one, so I'm not going to paste the blank one. You can see that earlier today I went through lesson one with my students where we annotated things. And you'll see my atrocious handwriting. I've gotten used to it. So here's the lesson that we did today with my students. At the end of class, when I was done, I went File, Publish as PDF. I clicked on Desktop, Notes for Students, which is right there, and this was Block B. I saved it right there. I've already saved Lesson 1, so I'm not going to hit Publish, but it's already sitting there. I clicked on Block C, which I also had today. File, Publish as PDF, Save. I would then click on Block D, File, Publish as PDF, Save. And I've done all three classes that I had today. You can do four classes in about two minutes. You can publish them all as PDF files. 
Now I've got them as PDF files in my notes for students. My next step is I want to upload them to Windows SkyDrive. Okay. I would open my browser. I would log into Windows SkyDrive. I would have bookmarked the address. Or you can just Google the word SkyDrive. It'll take you there. I've already logged in. I would have gone public, clicked on, well, SkyDrive would have taken me to this page here. I would have clicked on public, block B. I'd already created the unit one folder. And I would click on add files, choose file, desktop, notes for student, block B, lesson one. Now I've already uploaded lesson one. But I'll do it again. I'm going to guess it's going to say the file already exists. Or maybe it'll put a little one in brackets next to it. It's uploading. It's going to take about 15 seconds. Oh, it just overwrote the previous one that I had. There. I've got my notes online for block B. I would now go back to public, block C, unit one, add files, Upload my Block C notes for the day. Public, Block D, Unit 1, Add Files, and Upload. When you get good at it, this whole process takes about five minutes at the end of the day. So in five minutes at the end of class, you can get your notes online for students that are away. I also, anytime I give a quiz, the next day I'll upload a blank PDF of the quiz if kids want to do some extra practice. And I'll upload a handwritten annotated answer key. One of the ones my grade 12s really love is my uh, answer keys for Physics 12 and for Math 12. I'll just show you an example of one for Physics 12. I have a big review that I give all the kids. And then I have a PDF file. It's uh, answers. And let's... Oh, Save. You click the kids click on it to download it so they can download. Open. My students for math and physics have really raved about these. They have found these very, very helpful because this way in my class when we're doing our unit review, the rule is if you ask me a question, I'll say to you, well, have you checked the online answer key yet? And if the answer is no, I say to them, well, would you mind checking the online answer key? Because if you figure it out yourself from my work, you'll have learned it better. If you're still stuck, I'll help you with it tomorrow. And my students have really bought into these. They have found these very, very helpful. I have one big unit review for every unit in Math 12 and Physics 12. And it wasn't extra work. I was going to have to do an answer key no matter what. All I had to remember to do was to annotate it within the tablet instead. So it's not much extra work to be able to create a website and put your notes online. And we've done it all for free. We've used a free web service to create the website, and we've used Windows SkyDrive to store the data. And it's in an accessible manner so that kids can click and download. If you have any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, my email address is kdoeth at sd42.ca. <coughs> Excuse me. That's k-d-u-e-c-k at sd42.ca and I'd be happy to walk through this in more detail with you.